ho hi. This week we're doing a really silly project that I've been wanting to do for a couple months and I'm so proud of this. <laughs> I'm long overdue to make a Burt project. I'm gonna make him his own little battle vest so that he can be even more of a little punk. It's funny how I made my own battle vest however long ago and then just didn't wear it because I felt like it was too cool for me to put on. Then I was basically given homework to wear mine more often. I was wearing it out one day and my buddy Eric that works at another brewery that I absolutely love called From the Barrel, he had gotten some denim vests for his dogs when they were puppies. So he gave me one of them and it is finally time to turn this into something for the tiny menace. I'm gonna let him go tuck himself in on the couch because that's all he actually wants right now. Go ahead. He's good at getting himself onto the couch, but he needs someone to actually like pull a blanket over him and get him all cozy warm. All right, so here's the vest that I was given, as I mentioned, for a puppy version of a much bigger dog where Bert is not gonna get any bigger than this, where I had to take it in a bit and then also ended up shortening it because he's a long boy, but not that long. And also because he's a boy dog, I had to shorten the tummy section just so he didn't pee all over himself. But we did our little test fitting. And if you haven't met Bert before, this is my senior rescue dachshund. He He's gonna be 15 in May and we got him when he was about 11 and some change. So we're coming up on four years with this little guy and dude loves tummy rubs so much. I'm so thankful that he is tolerant of me dressing him up because he is often confused at first when I'm putting stuff on him because a lot of his toys are like soft fabric things. And I think his assumption is that it is something for him to chomp on. Where at first I thought I was like irritating him by putting the vest on and then was like, oh no, he just doesn't separate toys from clothing. What Whatever is coming near him, he, he's kind of a bite first, ask questions later kind of guy. With it on, I pinched at the sides and where the flat felt seams are on the front and the back at the sides. If I pinched those together, all that excess in between was what needed to be taken away. Just cause there's a yoke involved and a lot more happening with the shoulders and I want Bert to have as much room as possible. I'm only dealing with armholes down for this. So what I decided to do, you know, measure in how far that section is I pinched in. So it ended up being exactly two inches. Rather than do it from those two points, flat fell seam to flat fell seam, I decided to make my fold line where the armhole was just cause that was gonna make life easier for everybody involved and took in the two inches from there, which actually totaled four inches each side because with the fabric doubled over like this, you're getting two inches twice, but I measured in two inches from the edge when the fabric was folded. So that's where I'm getting that number. I was gonna leave this bottom band on the backside. Not the worst thing that this is long on him. I'm glad I decided to cut it off because it's already a doubled up part of the vest. So it's gonna be a absolute pain to sew through being denim. I cut that off and also the tummy had to get shortened a bunch well past that bottom button. So I just cut the whole dang thing off and then kept the back longer and kind of tapered it up towards that third button on the underside. Yeah, I could have searched all this and maybe I will do like a little bit more finishing, but there, there were some other tweaks I had to do later that I'm also probably just gonna leave because with a vest like this, the tattier the better. So I wasn't hemming the bottom edge of this. I was just gonna leave it raw and then the longer he has it and like wears into it, the better it's gonna look cause it's gonna get all frayed on the bottom. Like if you look at the sleeve holes, they're intentionally frayed ahead of time. So I don't think this is gonna be an issue at all. Left the collar alone because that very top snap was already fitting pretty well on him. Just everything else was super baggy. So once I cut off the bottom and then took in the side seams, I did kind of recut that bottom line because the way the side seams were, there was like a big discrepancy from the back to the front and I just wanted it to be like one smooth line. So that was the little tweak that I had to make after that. Then it was the customization time and I really hadn't planned out what to do for this. I had pictured whatever it is just being white and because it is such a small vest, I don't have like custom patches made for this. Though I would love to make a series of like fake dog bands and make little mini patches for such a thing. And then I would probably just put them on my own battle vest as well. Let me know if you have any thoughts and we can brainstorm this together. I really love this idea, but yeah, it certainly did not have time to execute this. And I don't know how to go about it in the first place. So I took out my laptop and started noodling around with the tablet feature, used the stylus in my drawing program to come up with dog skull and crossbones situation. It was super fun figuring this out. I'm still getting the hang of this program. I've made a couple zines that I've sent out to some of the tiers over on Patreon. That's been really, really cool to noodle around with and doing the fashion sketches. Just drawing stuff 
is not something I have a lot of confidence in my ability to do. With something like this, it's easy to like mirror images. So if I'm trying to make a design like this that I want it to look symmetrical, I can just select an area and then flip it and then line it up and obviously, you know, erase the overlap areas. And I did that for both the face, also for the actual like bones. That's a part I was really worried about looking good. So I just duplicated it and aligned it just so and then erased all the excess and I'm actually very very pleased with how this came out. If you think I should make stickers or something out of this, especially Patreon folks because that's the kind of stuff that I like to send out when I have ideas like this, let me know because I think it's really cute but I also don't know if I'm the only person that is excited about this. So yeah, once I had it sketched out and was happy with it, I printed it out on a piece of paper. Now I technically could have made it a little bigger but I think the final sizing and spacing of it ended up working out really well. Then it was time to figure out how to go about transferring the stencil and I had considered a couple different options and they all seemed way too complicated because that's like one of my special skill sets is overcomplicating things and making it way harder for myself than it needs to be. Thank you very much. So what I decided on is going over all of the lines I drew with a tracing wheel and some of this like wax paper because I use this for drawing on darts and things like that on pieces of fabric when a pattern needs something like that. Anything more than just like a notch on the edge of something and if it has to be on the interior of the garment piece, this is how I go about it. So it actually worked way better than I was anticipating because I've never done something this intricate. Not that it's an overly complicated design, like I don't know how to do something more detailed than this and it wasn't perfect but I think it got the job done so I went back over those lines with just a white colored pencil just to redefine them and then smart me I took one of the scraps of the denim that I had already cut off and I took one of my Posca paint pens because I know those work really well on a multitude of surfaces and I was just gonna give it a try and see how it worked on the denim and it it wasn't as opaque as I was hoping for where I just don't have a super steady hand so actually painting stuff with a paintbrush and paint. It never looks quite how I want it to, but also this is a DIY project for a very like DIY aesthetic. It's okay if it looks a little rough and ready to quote Prue from Great British Bake Off. It's supposed to look like somebody did it while drinking some Mad Dog 2020 behind a dumpster, you know? So I just threw the perfectionism aspect of this out the window, started painting and was listening to some good music and just had fun with it because oftentimes when I'm doing this type of decoration, I get very stressed out and don't enjoy doing it. I don't dislike painting, but I put so much pressure on myself when I'm doing it for it to be this like fine art thing. And that's not what we're doing here. I let myself enjoy noodling around with this. Yeah, I, so I filled in the eyeballs and the nose, but everything else I just did kind of thicker line work and tried to keep it fairly even. You know, I went over the eyes and the nose to start, but then once I was done all the other line work, those bigger patches had dried enough that I could put another layer. So those are solidly opaque now. And I'm really, really glad I went back over them. And I am just so pleased with how this came out. I actually went to see my friend's art show. Her name's Tara. Uh, I'll, I'll link to her Instagram in the description because I've never seen jewelry like hers where she makes wearable sculptures and just does metalworking techniques I've never really seen anybody else do before. Like she makes some pieces look like when you crumple up a piece of paper and then flatten it out again, but she does that with metal. It's so cool. She got accepted into the League of New Hampshire Craftsmen and they were doing this like highlight of all of the new members from the past couple years. So she was part of it and got to display a couple of her pieces and going to see a lot of other things like someone made a patchwork raincoat. It was all my favorite colors, like a cool toned green, a blue and a purple, all in like big color block sections. And it, it's like it was made for me. Just a very inspiring evening, but it was, you know, a number of hours that I was away from the house. So I finished finished painting this right before I left. Once I was home, I was too tired to deal with this. And like, Bert was also very sleepy and just ready to go to bed. So I didn't want to doll him up and make him traipse around in this vest. Also, it was dark out. So taking any pictures or little clips of him in it, I guess in here wouldn't have mattered, but the, the photos that I took, I'll post a couple more here. It was joyous chaos Yay, while he was trying it on and just poking around upstairs. And the other dog I live with was also very intrigued by what was happening. He's obsessed with Bert. They're so cute together. And Bert used to just ignore him him and I always felt really bad. His name is Cooper. Today and like the past handful of times they've interacted with each other, Bert has like actively gone over to Cooper to sniff him and Cooper's like, me? <laughs> it's so sweet. I mean, that is him 
currently barking, but my favorite story about Cooper, when we had our last dog, another senior mini dachshund rescue, Frank, his hips were giving out in those last couple months that we had him. He'd like walk along and then he he just kind of like plonk his back end on the floor then couldn't really get himself back up so he would just kind of stay where he fell where obviously if we saw him doing this we would pick him up and we did actually build him a little wheelchair to help and he absolutely hated it but it was good to you know keep him moving around a bunch but whenever cooper saw him do this i'm gonna try not to cry talking about this frank's front paws he'd he'd still be you know sitting up with that but his back end would kind of curve down to the floor and he'd kind of sit with like his little legs splayed to one side and Cooper would come over and use his snoot. I call him a little pig bat because he has such a specific shaped face and he's just so cute and he went over and, and used his snoot to like pick Frank's back end up and like get him walking again. Just the fact that like he knew his little guy needed help. It's the most wholesome thing I've ever seen in my life and of course now I'm actively crying about both how cute that is but also just missing that little guy where I'm so thankful for Bert. He is such a maniac sometimes but he clearly loves the crap out of me and there are fewer joys in the world than like an animal that doesn't have to like anybody picking you as their person. I've been very lucky with all the rescues I've ever lived with because I've always lived with rescues. Adopting dogs and not getting them from a breeder is like very important to me and everybody close in my life. And oftentimes those dogs or whatever other kind of pet it is have seen some things and they don't owe anybody anything and the fact that they still will be like I like you. It's just the best feeling in the world. Oh boy, this was a direction I was not expecting. I just love dogs. And the fact that there are many circumstances where it is a mutual love is uh, uh, overwhelming, apparently. I hope you enjoyed this project as much as I did. I know it wasn't like super involved, but it was one of those things I built up in my head that it was going to be more complicated than this, and it ended up being just fine. Oh, I did have to make one tweak because I didn't think about this. Once I took the vest in. I hadn't considered the placement of the armholes. Bert isn't super wide. He, everything on him is small. And these puppies, I would imagine, were like broader chested and their arms were like further out to the side, right? So I did have to cut little slits along the edge so that there was more width to the armhole, but it's all on the underside. So when he had it on and was poking around and I was holding him and stuff, I couldn't even see where those arm slits were. And again, it's okay if this stuff looks frayed. The rest of the armhole is already intentionally roughed up like this. So this is not gonna bother me. If it starts to split too far, I can reinforce the end with like a tack. Oh, and also, I didn't take as many notes for this as I normally do when I do a project because there weren't a lot of things to do, but clearly I'm not remembering them all. The other thing I wanted on this vest that I have been frustrated with when I've gotten other coats and stuff for the winter time for him is when there's not a hole in the neck for me to clip his leash to his collar through. So I did just a really quick and dirty buttonhole. I didn't get my foot out or anything because also like denim is just thick enough. I didn't want to fight with it. So I did two narrow rows of zigzag stitches that were parallel, pretty close together, like maybe a quarter inch apart. And then I did really wide zigzag stitches at the top and bottom of that. And then just used a seam ripper to cut that bit open to keep this section thin down. Out even more. I did take the tag off. That was actually the very first thing I did. And I know it's tedious, but I do enjoy sitting and unpicking stuff. Obviously not when it's a mess up and you are frustrated with yourself and mad about having to redo this thing. But if I get a thrifted something and I'm disassembling it to turn it into something else and like separating all the parts, seam ripping stuff so that I get as much of that fabric as possible instead of just cutting things apart, I really enjoy doing that. There's a limit to everything, but sometimes that kind of mindless, tedious stuff is all I ever want. Ooh, okay, now that we are done with the project and you have seen Bert in all of his glory, the sweetest boy. I mean, he did bitch slap me at one point, but considering he is so low to the ground, I could have easily avoided that in a multitude of ways, but I was so crouched down close to him on the floor that he was able to reach my face and I, he wasn't actively trying to hurt me. He just gets like very slappy when he's excited about stuff. 
and it's very cute and my face just happened to be in the way so I didn't take it personally but yeah speaking of tedious repetitive things I am so thankful everyone joined me for my last live stream where I just did some basic crochet stitches and tried to get the hang of it I think I've gotten a decent rhythm down I crocheted an entire skein of yarn together into what I was hoping to be like a little pitch scarf I made it a little too wide if it was narrower it'd be a little bit longer and like get the overlap exactly where I wanted it to be so I took the whole thing apart I think that's called frogging when you have a knit project or not knit but a yarn craft when you pull the whole thing apart I think that's called frogging although maybe that's only for knit stuff and not crocheted stuff if there's other terminology please let me know because the fact that that is the term you use for whichever one it is I like that very much I think it would be a lot of fun to continue practicing and do another live stream so the day you're seeing this I post at noon every Friday that a video was coming out where y'all let me skip a week every month so obviously a video doesn't go up when that happens but I try to post a short at least just so there's like something out and I can touch base with everyone just remind people if they're looking for stuff because there are certainly people that I follow that if they don't have a video up the day I usually see them post a video I do miss it but I also understand like people need to take time for either more evolved projects or just for their own mental health and like relaxation and better balance it's all okay but it's nice to get that little reminder like oh by the way this is the off week but anyway the day this is going up, which is the 3rd of February, let's do a live stream tonight. I do have an event on Sunday, so two days after you're seeing this, so I might have to do some event prep for that, and it may just be like cutting out tags or something, printing out signage perhaps. There is a earring design that I really want to make that's based off a JoJo's Bizarre Adventure character, Jean-Pierre Polnareff, because I'm doing a Valentine's market. It's at Rockingham Brewing Company from 1 to 4 p.m. There's going to be a winery there. Obviously, there's beer there because it's at a brewery. It's in Derry, New Hampshire. There's also going to be a food truck there, and there's going to be me and six other small local artists, including some like food stuff. Like there's gonna be a chocolate shop and a cupcake shop setting up a little pop-up there. So there's gonna be lots to check out and it'd mean a lot if any of you were able to come. But a live stream would be a lot of fun. You guys can keep me company while I'm working on that or I can just sit and continue crocheting and just practicing. I have very rarely just wanted to practice a hobby before and that's what I find myself doing with the crocheting is I'm restarting that entire scarf I did and just trying to get everything to look even. And I've only been doing that starter chain stitch and then a single crochet. Or I've dabbled in some of the other stitches, like making a magic ring, but I, I want to focus on one thing at a time, which again, not my usual MO with crafts. I want to be good at it immediately or I have zero interest. <laughs> So yeah, if you would like to hang out, that would be great. It's going to start at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, so hopefully that works out for a bunch of you. I think we went past 11 p.m. last time, so there was a window. Not that I'm promising I'm going to go for four hours, but, you know, we, we got a decent chunk of hanging out in there, and it's always just fun getting time with y'all. I missed the real-time interactions with everybody, where I know not all of you can make it to those, and some of y'all will leave comments afterwards if you, like, watch it a couple days later or whatever, and I appreciate those just as much, but it is nice having the back and forth and I didn't do much in the way of live streaming last year M made me really happy to get back into it I'm just gonna pick a time pick a day February 3rd 7 p.m. let's do the dang thing and before I go I wouldn't be able to take a whole night off to do a live stream or put the time and resources into projects like this silly little vest or my Howl's Moving Castle cardigan from last week that's one of my proudest makes of the year so far, even though the one before that was also a very proud make. I'm just pleased with the work I've been putting out so far this year, and we're not even out of January yet, so that feels pretty good. I'm only able to do this because of everybody over on Patreon. Y'all give me the gift of treating this like a part-time job. I get to do this. I get to have a fabric budget, and you know, I'm saving up for an industrial machine, which they're expensive, and once I get the studio upgrade that I'm gonna be getting in the next year or two, that will definitely be first order of business they're like $1,500 and that's a lot to save up towards but I'm able to kind of squirrel away little by little money towards that because of y'all and it's such a big thing to look forward to yeah I just appreciate y'all very very much and thank you for letting me do this and thank you to everybody that hangs out I've really appreciated the comments about stuff you've been working on this year or things you really liked that you worked on last year or just how y'all are doing I genuinely appreciate this 
community that we have, our, our little bog troll family. You're just the best. All right, before we go deep in the cheese again, I'm going to go get my laundry going, make a nice big breakfast. It is past one o'clock, so can you still call it breakfast? There will be eggs involved, whatever that means to you. I'm not here to gatekeep mealtimes. <laughs> I will see you back here tonight for our live stream at 7 p.m. I will see you at Rockingham Brewing Company on the 5th if you are around. It'd be lovely to see you. And otherwise, I will see you next Friday with another video. Thank you so much for hanging out. <laughs> you just slapped me in the face. Someone doesn't like against me, I guess.